Today's video is about an incredibly useful set of tools published by Microsoft, and it's called Power Toys. I made a video about it a while ago, a couple years ago, but since then, there have been so many more tools added to it that I figured I'd make an update video. There's actually more than twice as many now. And that includes two of my favorites that I think everyone will be able to find especially useful. You can download the latest version of Power Toys from Microsoft's GitHub page for it. I'll link that in the description. And basically, just look on the right side for where it says releases, and that'll show you the most recent one. So click on that and then scroll all the way down to where it says assets. You might have to expand this and look for the EXE that says X64. And it'll always say X64, by the way. It's just a coincidence that this time it's version 64. So don't get thrown off by that. And then running this will install. it. Technically, it's also in the Microsoft Store. However, it seems to not be updated nearly as often. For example, this one's from several months ago. So I would definitely just download it from the GitHub page directly. So anyway, first let me go over the two favorite ones that I think everyone should know about. And then we can talk about the rest as well. The first tool is called File Locksmith. And it will tell you what programs are using a file. So there have probably been plenty of times where you go to delete a file or modify it, and Windows will say, it's in use by some program. Sometimes it will tell you, but other times it may not, like if there's multiple programs using it. But with this, all you have to do is right click it and then hit what's using this file and it will bring up the interface and show you exactly what's using that file. Now there are other third party programs that do this similarly, but it's nice to have one that's semi-official. You can also select an entire directory or folder and it will scan all files and subfolders in that one and tell you which ones are being used by what programs. So you can see for each process, it has an end task option. It also says like the process ID, the user, and it will also show you other files being used by that program. Like if you selected a directory with multiple files in there, maybe multiple of them are being used by one program. What's also nice is this tool will tell you if a system account is using a file. A lot of times, it'll be like a background system task using a file and Explorer won't exactly tell you what's using it. It's kind of annoying. That's one of the harder ones to figure out, but now the file locksmith can do that. To do that though, you do have to use the run as administrator, the escalated mode, so it can have access to see what's using it. So I definitely think that's a tool that everyone is gonna be able to find useful. Now the other tool that's my favorite is called Text Extractor. And this is useful if you ever need to copy some text that you can't highlight and select for some reason. Maybe it's in a picture, maybe it's part of a UI element in Windows. With this, you can just use the shortcut and then click and drag over whatever text you want and it will use optical character recognition to extract the text and put it onto the clipboard. It may struggle when the font is really small or if it's a highly compressed image or something, but still, it's nice to have. All right, so those are my two favorite ones, but let's go over the other ones. They're also really useful. First up, we have Always On Top. This tool is pretty self-explanatory. You use the shortcut, which by default is Win Control T, and then it will simply keep the focused window that you had when you use the shortcut on top. It'll play a little sound that's optional and show an outline around the window to signify that it is going to stay on top. And you can see that's exactly what it does. Next up, we have Awake, also pretty self-explanatory. It simply keeps the computer awake. It keeps it from going to sleep. You have a few options, like you have it so it can actually automatically change the power plan, so it can keep the screen on, not just keep the computer awake, that sort of thing. So this might come in handy for whatever reason. Next up, we have Color Picker. I think this one's pretty cool. You simply use the shortcut Win Shift C, and it'll show a little box next to your mouse cursor, and it'll show what color is currently beneath the cursor, as well as the hex code for that color. So once you find a color you like, you can simply click and it will bring up this bigger color editor. On the right, there's this little color bar. At the center is the color that you picked. And then on the left and right, it'll show a couple shades lighter and darker. It'll also show you the color code in a few different notations. So not just hex, but also RGB, HSL, or whatever other ones you can set in the settings. And there's a whole bunch of options you can choose from. On the left of the editor, it'll also show a history of the colors that you've selected in the past. And you can also shift and click to select multiple of them. And then if you right click, you can actually export this list to a text file. Next up, we have File Explorer add-ons. This is like multiple in one, but basically it adds the ability to see previews and thumbnails of more 
file types and default. So for example, you have several different source code files actually that can be previewed, PDF, geometric code, and I'm not sure what that is exactly, stereo lithography, I mean a bunch of stuff that obviously someone thought was useful, and if you use those now you can get previews or thumbnails of those file types. This next one is called host files editor. If you're not familiar with the host file, it basically lets you manually enter DNS entries for your computer, which means it'll tie an IP address to a domain or a host. And this tool simply gives you an easier GUI to be able to manipulate that host file because normally you just open it with like notepad or something. So you have this little interface where you can add an entry and you can enter the IP address and its host. You can also toggle it on and off, which will simply add a comment symbol to either comment it out or not, depending on whether that entry is enabled. You can also filter if there's a whole bunch of them, or you can also open the file directly if you do want to mess with it. Though do be cautious when messing with the host file. If you don't know what you're doing, then you could kind of mess up your internet connection. Next up, we have mouse utilities, which is also multiple in one. So these are Find My Mouse, Mouse Highlighter, and Mouse Pointer Crosshairs. So Find My Mouse, you can set the shortcut to a few different things, either to press the control key twice, or just shake the mouse. And when you do, it'll do this zooming spotlight animation, I guess you could see, to highlight where the cursor is. So this is useful if you have a whole bunch of monitors and you're constantly losing your mouse. You could also have it deactivate in game mode. So if you're playing a video game, obviously you might be pressing the control key a lot or moving the mouse around. You don't want it to keep doing that. Or you could also have it exclude certain apps and also customize the appearance of it. Mouse highlighter is a little bit different. This makes it so every time you click your mouse, it will show a little circle and the circle will stay there for a little bit. So this is good maybe if you're doing presentations and you want to show exactly where you're clicking on stuff because it's hard to illustrate that. And then finally, there's mouse pointer crosshairs, which shows a big crosshair with vertical and horizontal lines centering on the mouse cursor. So this might be an alternative to the find my mouse option. Maybe you prefer it this way, or again, maybe if you're doing some kind of presentation that the person needs to always know where the mouse cursor is, might come in handy. You can also customize the color and stuff with this too. All right, this next one is called Quick Accent, and this will be useful if you use multiple languages on your computer, or maybe if you even use math equations and stuff that use symbols. And it basically just makes it easy to type accented versions of various characters. So how it works is you can have it so you hold down the letter and then press the activation key, which is the space or one of the arrow keys. And then once you do that, it will show a toolbar at the top though you can customize the location with various different accents for that particular character. And if you're wondering, there is normally a delay anyway between when you hold down a character key and when it starts just typing it a bunch of times. So it just takes advantage of that. You press the space bar, in that time and it'll pop it up. And then you can either keep pressing the space bar to toggle through these different accented characters and then land on the one you wanna use, or you can also use the arrow keys as well to scroll through them. And like I said, there's some here that you might not have thought of. For example, with A, it'll also even show you the alpha character. So again, if you're doing math and stuff like that, it might come in handy. All right, next up we have screen ruler. This one's pretty cool. And basically it lets you measure distances between different stuff on the screen. Let me show you. So basically you activate the shortcut and then this menu bar will appear at the top and you have a few options. So you can measure either just a regular or rectangle area and and this is pretty easy to understand. It'll show you the length and width of the region that you drag in pixels. But these other three options are really cool. They actually have it so it'll auto detect the distance between elements on the screen based on contrast. And there's three of them. There's one for vertical, one for horizontal, and then one for both at the same time. And you can see if you're dragging it in a window where there's pretty clear divisions between different colors, then this will do a really good job at showing you the distance between these different things. This could really come in handy if you're like a designer. And there's a bunch of settings you can use to control how this works. For example, the pixel tolerance, so how strong of a difference it has to be. You can do per color edge detection. If you don't like how it's behaving, maybe that'll work better for you. A few different options here. And finally is the tool called Video Conference Mute. And this lets you use a shortcut to mute or disable both the camera and your microphone at the same time, which might come in handy if you're doing some kind of web video and I don't know, maybe you don't trust the program to disable your camera, something like that, this might come in handy. Apparently for this tool, they're not gonna be adding any new features to it. It's just 
in maintenance stage. So they will be maintaining it for bugs and stuff, but I don't think they plan to add any new features for this one for whatever reason. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and also let me know down in the comments which of these is your favorite. Also, I always forget to mention, if you want to become a channel member, you can get my videos as soon as I finish uploading them, usually about a day early. Or if you just want to pay a couple bucks and get a little icon next to your name and be able to use the emojis, that's an option too. You can just click the join button. If you want to keep watching, I'll put a link to my previous video about Power Toys where I talked about the original apps that I didn't go over here because I already made them in that video. So you can click on that right there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.